Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Naresh Mago and with me is Reshma Tiwari with the evening news. The headlines. Two-day national executive meeting of BJP commences in Hyderabad. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, several union ministers and chief ministers of BJP ruled states attending the meet. Home Ministry hands over probe to NIA into killing of Umesh Kohle at Amravati in Maharashtra. Election for Speaker of Maharashtra Assembly to be held tomorrow. India and European Union conclude first round of negotiations for India-EU trade and investment agreements. New Delhi terms, comments on India by U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom as biased and inaccurate. 100th International Day of Cooperatives being observed today. Cooperation Minister Amit Shah says, idea of cooperatives is best medium to realize vision of all-inclusive development. INB Minister Anurag Singh Thakur interacts with owners and chief editors of media organizations in Hyderabad, highlights achievements of NDA government in various sectors. In cricket, India all out for 416 runs in first innings against England on second day of fifth test in Birmingham. Rishabh Pant and Ravindra Jadeja score centuries. Stand-in India captain Jaspreet Bumrah creates world record for scoring most runs in an over in test cricket. And in Wimbledon tennis, Rafael Nadal, Stefano Tsitsipas and Iga Shuntek to be in action in third round of singles matches. The two-day National Executive Committee meeting of the Bharatiya Janata Party commenced in Hyderabad this afternoon. Senior leadership of the party, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Union Ministers Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh and Nitin Gadkari, and 18 Chief Ministers of BJP rule states, along with 340 delegates, are attending the Executive Committee meeting. Prime Minister Modi paid floral tributes to Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay and other party ideologues on the occasion. He will be attending all sessions of the two-day meeting. BJP President J.P. Nadda inaugurated BJP's office bearers meets this morning. The two-day meeting of the BJP's key decision-making body will focus on strategies to further strengthen the party, especially in southern states. Party senior leader Vasundara Rajya Sindhya informed the media that a resolution will be discussed at the National Executive Committee meeting about the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. She also said a statement on Telangana will also be taken up at the meeting. BJP National General Secretary Tarun Chug informed the media that the National Executive Committee meeting is being held in Hyderabad after 18 years. The Prime Minister will also address a public meeting at the parade grounds in Sikandrabad tomorrow evening. BJP workers from 35,000 polling booths from across Telangana will attend the Vijay Sankalp rally. The rally is expected to be based on the theme of local culture and tradition. Briefing about the inaugural session of the BJP's National Executive Meeting this evening, Senior Party Leader Smriti Irani said, The National Executive Meeting has placed its gratitude and appreciation for Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his government's untiring efforts for the welfare of the poor, especially during the COVID pandemic. Ms. Irani said, BJP President J.P. Nadda has appreciated the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana and other welfare measures that are being implemented for women in the country. The presidential address also placed on record the appreciation for implementation of Gati Shakti, Kisan Samman Nidhi and other welfare programs on the occasion. Nadaji today in the inaugural speech spoke elaborately on various government schemes, be it Jandhan Yojana, which has provided economic support and emancipation of close to 45 crore Indian citizens or programs such as the Pradhan Mantri Avast Yojana which has given housing to over 3 crore citizens. He also spoke eloquently about the various social service schemes ranging from Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana onwards to policies and programs dedicated to farmers in our country. The National President was particularly pleased to express our gratitude to the Honorable President Prime Minister, with regards to schemes dedicated to emancipation of women. Ms. Irani noted that the inaugural address appreciated the efforts of party workers who worked for the party's victory in the recent elections and the services that they are rendering despite challenges in Kerala, West Bengal and other states. 
Responding to a question over the criticism of TRS, Ms. Irani said, Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao has breached constitutional dignity and decorum. The Prime Minister from his first day in office has given a clarion call for cooperative federalism. The Prime Minister in his eight years of service has met leaders from various political parties and deferred to them with respect as is constitutionally desired, as is validated by Maryada. That KCRG has not only disrupted what has been constitutionally a federal protocol in our country, that he has broken Maryada constitutionally, politically, culturally, societally reflects on him. The Union Home Ministry has handed over the investigation of the case relating to the barbaric killing of the of a veterinary medical professional, Umesh Kolhe, at Amravati in Maharashtra on 21st of June to the National Investigation Agency, NIA. The ministry said the conspiracy behind the killing, involvement of organizations and international linkages would be thoroughly investigated. A team of NIA has reached Amravati to investigate the murder case of Umesh Kolhe. Deputy Commissioner of Police Vikram Sali informed that six accused have been arrested so far. अभी तक उमेश कोल्ले मर्डर केस में हमने छह आरोपियों को अटक किया है हमें यही पता चला है कि श्रीमती नुपुर शर्मा के बारे में जो उमेश कोल्ले जी ने सोशल मीडिया पे पोस्ट किया था उसी वजह से ये गुना कर है अर्लियर राज्यसभा एमपी डॉक्टर अनिल बोंडे डिमांडेड अ हाई लेवल इंक्वायरी इनटू द मर्डर ऑफ उमेश कोल्ले डॉक्टर बोंडे सेड दिस इंसिडेंट इज सिमिलर टू उदयपुर NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu visited Puducherry today to seek electoral support from legislative members of the Union Territory. In a simple function held in Puducherry today, she met the legislators to seek their support in the upcoming presidential election. She was accompanied by Union Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murali Dharan and Union Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Dr. L. Murugan. In the Union Territory, the All India NR Congress has 10 seats and its alliance partner BJP has 6 seats. DMK is the main opposition party with 6 seats. There are 6 independent legislators. The three nominated MLAs have no voting power. The Union Territory has one Lok Sabha MP from Congress and one Rajya Sabha MP from BJP. A two-day special session of Maharashtra Legislative Assembly will begin in Mumbai tomorrow. The 38 MLAs who were in Goa are returning this evening to Mumbai. On the first day of the special session tomorrow, the election for the State Legislative Assembly Speaker will be held. The contest is between Bharatiya Janata Party's Rahul Narvekar and Mahavikas Agari's Rajan Salvi. BJP leader Praveen Darekar said they have a total support of 170 MLAs and therefore Mr. Narvekar will emerge victorious. More in this report from our Mumbai correspondent. The 38 MLAs of the Eknath Shinde faction who were out of the state since last 11 days returned to Mumbai this evening. Chief Minister Eknath Shinde himself accompanied all these MLAs from Goa to Mumbai in a special flight. Talking to reporters in Goa, Chief Minister Eknath Shinde said that all the MLAs will participate in a meeting in Mumbai, adding that all the legislators will remain present in Vidhan Sabha tomorrow. Ahead of the Speaker's election, the Shiv Sena has issued a whip and has asked all its MLAs to remain present in the House and vote for the Mahavikas Aghadi candidate, Raj. Sarvi. Meanwhile, commenting on Eknath Shinde's expulsion from Shiv Sena, Deepak Kesarkar, spokesperson of the Shinde faction, raised objection and said that they are exploring to take a legal recourse on the matter. Kunal Shinde, AIR News, Mumbai. The Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Ministry today announced that National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme will be a part of Direct Benefit Transfer Scheme, providing direct government benefits to all apprentices. Earlier, companies used to pay apprentices the entire amount and then seek reimbursement from the government. The ministry said with the launch of the DBT scheme, the government will directly transfer its contribution to bank accounts of apprentices through National Skill Development Corporation. Loading the initiative, Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Minister Dharmendra Pradhan said that apprenticeship is getting a big boost under Skill India. Chemicals and Fertilizers Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia has said the government is committed to support the pharma companies with industry-friendly policies and investor-promoting ecosystem. Addressing a function on India's Pharma Vision 2047 in New Delhi, the minister highlighted the importance of long-term policies which in provide stability to the industry. 
Dr. Mandavia asserted that the government policies are based on extensive and comprehensive stakeholder consultation, which provide the basis for comprehensive, long-term and vibrant policy ecosystem. More than 197 crore 84 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. 17,092 new COVID cases were reported in the country in the last 24 hours. India's active caseload currently stands at 1,9568 and it is at 0.25%. The recovery rate is currently at 98.54%. A total of 14,684 people recovered in the last 24 hours. You are listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Two-day National Executive Meeting of BJP commences in Hyderabad. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, several Union Ministers and Chief Ministers of BJP ruled states attending the meet. Home Ministry hands over probe to NIA into killing of Umesh Kolhe at Amravati in Maharashtra. Election for Speaker of Maharashtra Assembly to be held tomorrow. India and European Union conclude first round of negotiations for India-EU trade and investment agreements. New Delhi Times comments on India by U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom as biased and inaccurate. 100th International Day of Cooperatives being observed today. Cooperation Minister Amit Shah says, idea of cooperatives is best medium to realize vision of all-inclusive development. INB Minister Anurag Singh Thakur interacts with owners and chief editors of media organizations in Hyderabad, highlights achievements of NDA government in various sectors. In cricket, India all out for 416 rounds in first innings against England on second day of fifth test in Birmingham. Rishabh Pant and Ravindra Jadeja score centuries. Stand-in India captain Jaspreet Bumrah creates world record for scoring most runs in an over in test cricket. And in Wimbledon tennis, Rafael Nadal, Stefanos Tsitsipas and Iga Swiatek to be in action in third round of singles matches. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख। आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय? आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प। और अब तो आप घर, दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग। आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता। बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर। आठ सात शून्य शून्य कंपटीशन के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करेंगे abhyas.airnews@gmail.com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास India and the European Union concluded the first round of negotiations for the India-EU trade and investment agreements in New Delhi last evening. The week-long negotiations were held in a hybrid fashion. During this round, 52 technical sessions covering 18 policy areas of free trade agreement and seven sessions on investment protection and geographical indicators were held. The second round of negotiations is scheduled to take place in September next year at Brussels. The negotiations were launched by Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal and European Commission's Executive Vice President Valdis Dombrovskis at Brussels last month. New Delhi today termed the comments on India by the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, USCIRF, as biased and inaccurate. In reply to media queries, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arinda Bhakti said, These comments reflect a severe lack of understanding of India and its constitutional framework, its plurality and its democratic ethos. He said, regrettably, USCIRF continues to misrepresent facts time and again in its statements and reports in pursuance of its motivated agenda. The spokesperson stressed that such actions only serve to strengthen concerns about the credibility and objectivity of the organization. 100th International Day of Cooperatives is being observed today. The day is marked annually on the first Saturday of July. 
This year, the day is being observed on 2nd of July to highlight the contributions of the cooperative movement. It also spreads awareness about how cooperatives work in harmony for social, cultural and economic development. We have a desk report. This year, all the cooperatives across the globe will be celebrating the International Day of Cooperatives under the theme of Cooperatives Build a Better World. The International Day of Cooperatives is commonly known as Co-ops Day. Marked by cooperatives worldwide since 1923 and officially proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly on the centenary of the ICA in 1995, the International Day of Cooperatives is celebrated annually on the first Saturday of July. The aim of Co-ops Day is to increase awareness of cooperatives and promote the movement's ideas of international solidarity, economic efficiency, equality and world peace. Since 1995, the ICA and the United Nations, through Committee for the Promotion and Advancement of Cooperatives, have jointly set the theme for the celebration of Co-ops Day. With Virendra Singh's report, Abhishek Mukhopadhyay from News Desk. Home and Cooperative Minister Amit Shah greeted people on the occasion. Mr. Shah said, the idea of cooperatives is the best medium to realize the vision of all-inclusive development. In a series of tweets, the minister paid respects to all great men who worked tirelessly to strengthen the idea of cooperatives in India. He said, the Ministry of Cooperation is determined to make this sector more powerful, modern and transparent by taking many important steps. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur interacted with owners and chief editors of media organizations in Hyderabad today. During the interaction, the minister informed them about achievements of the NDA government in various sectors. He said the motto of the central government is Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, and all programs are being implemented with the focus on this vision. Science and Technology Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh has called for promoting startups in carbon neutral building construction and linking them with industry to help India achieve 500 gigawatts non fossil energy capacity by 2030. Dr. Singh said this during Solar Decathlon India Award Ceremony in New Delhi, a joint Indo-US initiative to address challenges of climate change. He urged real estate developers, industry and academia to find innovative, affordable solutions that adapt to India's climatic zones and reduce risk to lives and property. In Manipur, the death toll from the landslide incident in Noni district has risen to 34, as 13 bodies were found today. More than 80 people, including 43 personnel of Territorial Army, are suspected to have been buried alive in the debris on Wednesday. Manipur Chief Minister N. Viren Singh is monitoring the rescue operation. Over 400 personnel of NDRF, SDRF, police, fire service, Assam Rifles, Army, local volunteers and others have been engaged in the rescue work. Meanwhile, another major landslide was reported in Noni district today. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events is being organized by the government as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. To commemorate the occasion, All India Radio News brings its listeners Amrit Mahotsav Quiz, a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The next question of the quiz will be shared with the listeners on Monday, 4th of July. Celebrate India's Amrit Mahotsav by participating in the quiz. And now, let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. Birth of a nation, India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of this struggle every day. <laughs> In today's episode, we remember freedom fighter Yusuf Mihar Ali, who died on the 2nd of July 1950. Yusuf Mihar Ali is credited with giving the slogans, Simon, go back! 
and quit India. Simon, go back! Simon, go back! Yusuf Meher Ali was born on the 23rd of September 1903. He founded the National Militia, Bombay Youth League and the Congress Socialist Party and played a role in several peasant and trade union movements. He also took part in the protests against the Simon Commission. He took part in the Quit India Movement and was imprisoned. He was elected mayor of Bombay in 1942 while he was imprisoned in Yerawara Central Prison. A notable writer, Yusuf Ali is credited with writing Leaders of India, The Price of Liberty and Underground Movement. The nationalist leader continued to work for the people until his death in 1950. AIR News salutes the great Indian. We also remember freedom fighter Bakhs Khan, who was appointed general of the Hindustan army of Bahadur Shah Zafar on the 2nd of July 1857. A resident of Bareilly, Uttar Pradesh, Khan was initially working as a subedar in the artillery of the British Indian Army. He left the British service during the first war of Indian independence in 1857 and joined the independence activists at Bareilly. He became a brigadier of the activists in Bareilly and made arrangements for arms and ammunition. In June 1857, he marched towards Delhi along with his followers. Bakhs Khan reached Delhi on the 2nd of July 1857 and was welcomed by Bahadur Shah Zafar who called him Farzan and appointed him as the Commander-in-Chief with the title General. Bakhs Khan reorganized the army in Delhi, gave them six months advance salary and ordered them to maintain strict discipline. He also played a key role in forming the administrative council called Jalsai Forji Vamulki to maintain law and order in Delhi. Although he succeeded in ousting the British forces from various strongholds in Delhi, he lost in the Battle of Najafgarh on 25th of August 1857. Bakht Khan left Delhi after its fall to the British in September 1857, but continued to fight the British in Lucknow and Rohilkhand. After the uprising was suppressed, Bakht Khan escaped towards Nepal and was reported to have been killed there in action in 1859. AIR News salutes the great freedom fighter. We also remember Marta Savan, who took part in the First War of Independence in 1857 in Gujarat. Savan highlighted the cruelties of the British and inspired his neighbors to raise their arms to overthrow the foreign rule. He was captured by the British and charged with sedition and rebellion against the company rule. Savan was sentenced to imprisonment for life with labor in irons. He died in captivity on the 2nd of July, 1859, in the Andaman Islands. We salute the brave son of the soil. We also remember martyrs Dodhai, Bhagwan and Sahadev, residents of district Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh, who were sentenced to death on the 2nd of July, 1923. During the non-cooperation movement, the British police of Chori Chora Thana opened fire on the peaceful protesters in the area, causing deaths and injuries to many. When the police ran out of ammunition and found the gathering infuriated by the firing, they retreated and hid themselves inside the police station. A few infuriated activists sprayed kerosene oil on the building and set it on fire, killing all the 23 policemen inside. Dodhai, Bhagwan and Sehdev were among the accused and were convicted for taking part in the Chori Chora case. They were sentenced to death and hanged on the 2nd of July 1923. All India Radio News salutes the brave sons of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadika Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Welcome back to the news. National Mission for Clean Ganga NMCG has created Namami Gange Amrit Vatika at Kalindi Kunj Ghat on River Yamuna in New Delhi with planting of 75 saplings under Azadika Amrit Mahotsav. The plantation activities will, were carried out under the initiative 
Yamuna Ghat par Riksha Ropan. Speaking on the occasion, Director General of NMCG, G. Ashok Kumar, said that cleaning of tributaries of River Ganga, especially Yamuna, is one of the focus areas of Namami Gange program. He motivated the participants to become part of this Clean Yamuna campaign. Cleanliness drive on River Yamuna in Delhi is a regular activity organized on the fourth Saturday of every month by National Mission for Clean Ganga. In cricket, India were all out for 416 runs in their first innings against England on the second day of the rescheduled fifth test match at Edbiston Stadium in Birmingham. The visitors had resumed their first innings at the overnight score of 338 for 7. Rishabh Pant and Ravindra Jadeja both scored centuries. Pant scored 146 runs of 111 balls, while Jadeja scored 104 of 194 balls. For England, James Anderson was the most successful bowler, who claimed five wickets. Earlier, the host won the toss and elected to field first. England was 60 for three in their first innings when rain stopped play. Earlier in the day, rain interrupted the play twice when the host began batting in their first innings. Standing captain Jaspreet Bumrah smashed Stuart Broad for 29 runs to create a world record for maximum runs in a single over in Test cricket. The Indian skipper was not out on 31 of 16 balls with four boundaries and two sixes. With this, he has surpassed legendary West Indian batter Brian Lara who hit South Africa's Robin Peterson for 28 in an over in 2003. The England vs India one-off test is the fifth, fifth test from last year's tour which was postponed due to COVID-19. India lead the series 2-1. The Indian women's hockey team will face England in their opening match of the 15th edition of the FIH Women's Hockey World Cup at 8 p.m. Indian time tomorrow. The tournament is being co-hosted by Spain and the Netherlands. In Wimbledon tennis, Rafael Nadal and Stefano Sissipas will play their third round singles matches today. Second seed Nadal of Spain will take on 27th seed Lorenzo Sonego of Italy for a place in the last 16 of men's singles. In another match, fourth seed Sissipas of Greece will face Australian Nick Kyrgios. In women's singles, top seed Iga Shrantek is currently facing French Alice Cornet. Fourth seed Paula Badosa of Spain will take on 25th seed Petra Kvitova shortly. Earlier in the day, 16th seed Simona Halep of Romania overpowered Magdalena French of Poland 6-4-6-1 to enter the round of 16. Australia's Ajla Tomjalbortic also advanced to the fourth round after defeating former French Open champion and 13th seed Babo Rakrachikova 2-6-6-4-6-3. However, American 11th seed Coco Goff was knocked out of the tournament by compatriot Amanda Anisimova. In the other match, British wildcard Katie Bolter's Wimbledon run was ended in the third round by a swift loss to France's Harmony Tan. Now let us have a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Chennai will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Srinagar and Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear skies becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. Jammu will have a thunderstorm with rain. Leh and Gilgit have a mainly clear sky. In the northeast, Guwahati, Imphal, Aizol, Shillong, Itanagar and Kohima will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Two-day national executive meeting of BJP commences in Hyderabad. Prime Minister Modi, several union ministers and chief ministers of BJP ruled states attending the meet. Home Ministry hands over probe to NIA into killing of Umesh Kohle at Amravati in Maharashtra. Election for Speaker of Maharashtra Assembly to be held tomorrow. India and European Union conclude first round of negotiations for India-EU trade and investment agreements. New Delhi terms comments on India by U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom as biased and inaccurate. 100th International Day of Cooperatives being observed today. Cooperation Minister Amit Shah says, idea of cooperatives is best medium to realize vision of all-inclusive development. INB Minister Anurag Thakur interacts with owners and chief editors of media organizations in Hyderabad. Highlights achievements of NDA government in various sectors. In cricket, India all out for 416 runs in first innings against England on second day of fifth test in Birmingham. Rishabh Pant and Ravindra Jadeja score centuries. Stand in India captain Jaspreet Bumrah creates world record for scoring most runs in and over in test cricket. And in Wimbledon tennis, Rafael Nadal, Stefano Sitsipas and Iga Shontek to be in action in third round of singles matches. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night. <laughs> 